what's going on YouTube, it's your boy Brandy Boy back at it again with another Fallout 4 video, and for this video, I'm going to be showing y'all my top 5 favorite heavy weapon mods for Fallout 4. So first, what exactly do I mean by a heavy weapon? Well, I'm going by the Fallout classification really. Basically, any weapon that's really big and bulky, and isn't a conventional infantry firearm. Some may be portable, but others are usually mounted to vehicles. In Fallout though, the invention of power armor enables soldiers to carry those extra heavy weapons. Well, either that or you can just max out your strength stat. Anyway, heavy weapons in Fallout especially include heavy machine guns, miniguns, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, and even flamethrowers, each of which will be present on this list. These kind of weapons are needed when you require extreme levels of DPS, so they're great for taking out really tough enemies such as super mutants, death claws, power armor, or just giant hordes of ghouls. Let's go ahead and get into the mods. Coming in at 5th place is the RPG-7, a classic rocket launcher. This one's pretty special because it's got a set of unique animations, which are very well made. There's not a whole lot of customization here. All you can do is add some scopes, paint jobs, and switch up the ammunition type. There's several different types of rockets added in by this mod, and you can switch between them while in the field with the use of a new aid item. It's called the Rocket Switcher, but you'll have to craft it at the chem station first. Once you activate it, it'll cycle through all the different rocket types. Regular, heavy, cluster, proximity, and even nuclear. The RPG-7 is the most widely used rocket launcher in the world. And I'm sure you've all recognized it, because it's also super popular in video games. This Russian launcher has been around for ages now, ever since the 1960s, and it's still being used today. It's mainly used by infantry to take out enemy vehicles, especially those heavily armored ones. It is a rocket launcher after all, so it's pretty good at blowing stuff up. Here in Fallout though, it may serve a different purpose. You may want to use its power to take out towering behemoths and other giant irradiated abominations. This mod has its own leveled list, so you will be able to find the RPG and its rockets as loot from enemies, and you can buy it from vendors as well. Speaking more about the weapon mod itself though, well, this is one of the best of its kind. It's got clean textures, fitting animations, and it's simply a blast to use. I always find myself coming back to it when I need help taking out a tough enemy, and that's why it's earned a top 5 spot on my list. In fourth is yet another launcher, but this is a more fantastic one, in the literal sense. This is the Cazador Missile Launcher. This one's also got custom animations, and I especially like that neat looking reload. My only gripe really is that if you play on a higher field of view, then your character's left shoulder will be clipping through the camera. <laughs> Bringing it to the workbench allows you to craft a few attachments. There is a selection of scopes, camos, missile types, and also an option for a targeting system. Just like the RPG mod, the Cazador launcher also has its own ammo switcher, but instead of cycling through the ammo types, it'll pull up a menu, and you'll be able to pick exactly which ammo you'd like. As you can see, there's lots of options. Regular, Cryo, Napalm, Acid, EMP, Frenzy Gas, Plasma, and of course, Nuclear. Like I mentioned before, this is a weapon of pure fantasy, but it is reminiscent of a M1 bazooka. At the same time though, you have to admit, this looks exactly like something you'd see in Fallout. It's a high-tech missile launcher with some interesting design quirks. Being a missile launcher of course, it's most appropriately used against those extra tough enemies, such as giant mutants and robots. The various heavy payloads to choose from will surely be more than enough firepower to deal with anything and you can always use the targeting system to lock onto your enemies for a deadly direct hit. Overall, this is a pretty awesome mod, and yes, this one is a blast to use too. I love the creativity that went into making this mod, so that easily makes it one of my favorite heavy weapons. Coming in at third is something a bit different. This is the M2 Flamethrower. This mod is basically an alternative to that ugly pile of junk flamer that's in the vanilla game, and it looks way cooler in my opinion. Yeah. 
when it comes to customization. There's not a whole lot, but you can make several changes to enhance the effectiveness of the flamethrower. The M2 flamethrower is yet another classic. It was introduced by the US during World War II, and one of its main uses was to clear out trenches and bunkers. It's pretty dang good at doing that. You definitely don't want to be stuck in a box while being cooked alive. In close quarters, the M2 flamethrower is an absolute menace, but it doesn't have much effectiveness beyond 20 meters. It's quite a heavy unit too. You'll have to look around some heavy fuel tanks on your back to feed this killing machine. You'll need to be wary of being on the receiving end of this flamethrower though, because this mod adds in a new NPC type, the Raider Pyro. It also changes the level list for the Forged as well. Both enemies will now spawn with the M2 flamethrower, and of course, you'll be able to pick it up as loot after you're done with them. Once you got one, fun is just as easy as holding down your left mouse button. Seriously, that's all you gotta do. And just simply sit back and watch as your enemies are burnt to a crisp. And remember, it's not a war crime as long as you win. Anyway, this mod is simply too much mindless fun to pass up on, and it's easily the best flamethrower mod out there, so undoubtedly it belongs here on this list. In second, we're shifting gears again. This is the Miniguns Rebirth mod. It adds in three different miniguns. The personal minigun, which is lightweight and chambered for the newly added 5mm rifle cartridge. Then there's the Avenger minigun, a little bit heavier, and it's chambered for 5.56. And then there's the Mac Daddy Vindicator, a humongous heap of metal, chambered for 308. The miniguns share the same animations as the one from the vanilla game, but they do have custom sounds. These miniguns have a good amount of customizability. There's receiver upgrades, plenty of barrels, several sights, ammo types, ballistic shields even, and some paint jobs. These miniguns in particular are weapons of pure fantasy, but as we all know, miniguns do exist in real life. Perhaps the most recognizable one is the M134 minigun. There's definitely some noticeable differences between the two here. The mod author took several liberties and added that classic Fallout touch to them, but I certainly do appreciate their aesthetic. Miniguns are usually vehicle mounted or stationary weapons exclusively, and that's because they are super heavy and powered by an electric motor. Not only that, but there's simply too much recoil for a man to handle, unless you're Rambo or something. In Fallout though, it would actually make sense for them to be portable, with the use of power armor that is. Otherwise I would have no clue how these handheld miniguns would be feasible, but who really cares, right? You'll be too busy shredding up hundreds of ghouls to worry about all that nerd stuff. If you're looking to find these new miniguns, then you'll be able to find them at several hand-placed locations. The personal minigun will be on the roof of the Museum of Freedom, and the Avenger will be locked away in Fort Hagen, while the Vindicator is holed up in the armory at Fort Strong. If you're feeling lazy though, then you can pull up the minigun's holotape. It's automatically added into your inventory after you install the mod. With the holotape, you can shoot the weapons into your pockets or unleash them into the leveled list. So back to the miniguns here. These are a great alternative if you're bored of the vanilla minigun. And honestly, this is the best minigun mod out there. I love the variety, customization, and overall quality and effort that was put into this mod. So it most certainly earns a high ranking on this list. It can only be bested by its succeeder. In first place, the absolute best heavy weapon mod for Fallout 4 is the Machine Gun's Rebirth mod. It's made by the same mod author who brought us those awesome miniguns. This mod adds in four new heavy weapons, and when I say heavy weapon, I mean heavy. These guns are humongous. There's the Mark 22, chambered in 50 BMG, the Mark 19, chambered in 308, the AGL, chambered in 40mm explosives, and then there's the Flak Gun, a handheld cannon chambered for 20mm. Again, these all use vanilla animations, but everything else is exclusively crafted.
Just like with the miniguns mod, there's plenty of attachments for these weapons. Receivers, barrels, ammo types, sights, shields, and paint jobs. I'll start with the Mark 19 here. It somewhat resembles the M2 Browning machine gun, but of course, it's been Fallout-ified. This heavy machine gun is more than capable for taking on the Wasteland's toughest enemies. The high caliber coupled with a fast fire rate makes it a force to be reckoned with. Same goes for the Mark 22, but it's even bulkier and deadlier. If you're looking for pure DPS, then this is probably your best choice. It spits out 50 caliber rounds at a fast pace, so it can delete pretty much any opponent, even a pack of death claws. If you're really looking for some extreme overkill, then you should try out the flak gun. It's a slower firing, but even heavier hitting alternative. I wouldn't recommend using it on humanoid creatures though, or else you won't be able to find their bodies afterward. Really this gun is meant for taking out aircraft, but I guess you'll just have to use it on behemoths instead. And lastly there's the AGL, which looks a lot like the grenade launcher from New Vegas. It performs very similarly as well. It spews out tons of explosive grenades, for when you want to blow stuff up multiple times. A lot of times. Perhaps too many times, really. Just who the heck needs a fully automatic assault grenade launcher? Me. I do. I need it. Anyway, if you're looking to find these heavy guns, then you'll have to go on a little journey first. There's plenty of different locations where you can find hand-placed variants. The National Guard Barracks, Listening Post Bravo, Federal Ration Stockpile, the Gunner's Plaza, and the Abandoned Shack in the Glowing Sea. Again, if you don't want to do all that searching, then you can always refer to the Machine Guns Holotape that'll be added into your inventory upon installing the mod. It works just like the Miniguns Holotape from the previous mod. Right, back to the Machine Guns here. These are super duper fun to use, and very powerful as well. You'll definitely want to get some of these by the late game, so that you'll be able to take on those gigantic enemies. You get all this fun in just one package, and there's plenty of variety. That's some serious bang for your buck, you gotta admit. And dare I say, this is the best heavy weapons mod of all time. It'll be hard to top this one, but for now, that concludes this list. I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and are looking forward to using these weapons in-game. If you like the mods, then make sure to download them and endorse their Nexus page. And if you like the video, then make sure to annihilate that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And I'll see y'all in the next video.